Good morning, everybody. Look outside. It's still dark. It's four o'clock in the morning, and today there's Marty. We're doing an adventure, and I'm currently making some porridge here because we're gonna need a lot of energy for our adventure today. We are going to Corcovado. The reason we got up so early, as Richard said, is the hike today at Corcovado National Park. This is not in Brazil, this is in Costa Rica. In Brazil we will be in April again. And it is 5.30, so it took us about half an hour to drive from the accommodation to Puerto Jimenez, where we are now, where the guide is going to pick us up. There is no other way to go to Corcovado than with a guide, so this is a compulsory thing. And there is our guide already. And uh, yesterday we had a hike in the premises of the accommodation we have. There is a big, big forest. We saw a huge, massive tree. Uh, impressive avatar, massive tree. And this one uh, grows in the middle of this little mini jungle the accommodation has. And we also saw some co cacao plants. There are cacao plants in the uh, in the property and they use it to make chocolate. So uh, we also get to taste the chocolate that was really delicious. So let's hit the hike and see you in the national park. We stopped here at this tree because there's a putu in this tree and it's very hard to see because it's a super camouflage bird. It's nesting actually in this tree. No, oh, Gabe already brought the baby sitting next to the mom. Yeah, but he's nesting and having the baby. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the baby came out of the nest. <laughs> but it's still nesting, that's why they know that it's in this tree. And uh, they're both sleeping. They're both sleeping during the day and during the night, they make this funny noise. So that was a putu. It's a white hawk. So here in the tree there are a lot of spider monkeys that are jumping around. Unfortunately they are so hard to catch with the camera. Maybe you can see the trees leaving a little bit, shaking a little bit. There's one. They are super light. The adult is only one kilo, so they can jump from one tree to the other. So this is a big ficus tree, the root, and here's our group. That's Louise, actually, who is carrying the binocular. This is a single single enlarging glasses and Marty and then there are two more people from Belgium and the other people are not belong to our group and this is a secondary forest secondary forest actually means there used to be a primary forest yeah and there used to be humans here because there was gold and they were searching for gold here but now everything is protected and the forest is taken back. So this is primarily forest or the second forest, not the first original forest. And we will hike now around an hour to the ranger station. We are already in the Cocovado area or Cocovado National Park. So it goes deeper and deeper into the jungle. So here is uh, Pizzotti eating some bananas. They still think no so. spare. So there are howler monkeys here in the tree. It's a ficus tree and they're actually vegetarian. They're eating the fruit and the leaves. That was a black and green poisonous dart frog. I hope the pictures turn out a little bit. 
I took with the camera and it's called dart frog because the indigenous people they put the poison on the on the top of the arrow because it's very toxic. So one big part or actually the entrance to the Rio Crocodile National Park is close to the beach and before you enter then the primary forest you have to walk about 10 to 15 minutes on the beach which is a beautiful walk because this beach there's there's nobody and it's a pure white nature now we have walked already three kilometers and we are supposed to walk today 15 kilometers so that's going to be exciting here in the sun it's a little bit hot but then in the forest it will be shadow, shadowish again and it's about 30 degrees humidity is very high but so far it's really really a pleasant walk we saw so many animals already beautiful and here we are at the entrance of the Cocovado National Park this is the ranger station oh, I would like to be the ranger in this station being at the beach and this is beautiful nature. Look at this. This is where we are now. We park the car around here. And we're going to walk about here. And there's a possibility to do the park with overnight. So then you stay here in Sirena. And you probably walk like this and this. But that's two days and this distance here is 16 kilometers and it says five hours of walking and this one is 21 kilometers five hours i think it must be more for 16 kilometers but it depends if it goes up and down and this is the ranger station and we're having a snack now as you can see before we will enter the rear cocovado park so most of the time they are very close to each other. There's a termite nest here in the tree and you can see these termites are very sensitive to light. So what they're doing is they're building a tunnel all the way down to the ground. And so they are protected from the light. And here you can see some of them crawling around but otherwise you will never see these termites there goes away down to the root and our guide was explaining that the termites have actually a lot and lots of protein so when you get lost in the jungle and you are starving when you eat around 500 termites you have the same protein intake like eating a granola bar so that might be will make you help to survive when you get lost in the jungle. so they can climb over. There's the baby coming. Uh, up here. Hopla. So in 1945 actually the Costa Rican government declared this area to a national park and in 1987 there were around 200 families living here. The last families uh, moved out from this area and we are already walking i would say like an hour through this forest and that is still secondary forest so all that 
for me it looks like a jungle, is grown back forest where once used to be farmland and cattle and banana plantations. That's why there are also so many banana plants in this forest. And only from the next ranger station on will be primarily forest, so the original forest. But it's really impressive when you say 1945, that's 55, uh, 65, 60, 70 years it takes and nature takes everything back, big trees are growing, very impressive. And look at this tree where Marty is standing, the funky root, it's like a picture frame. This tree is a strangler ficus and actually the seed comes uh, by birds drop from the sky, lands on another plant or tree and then the roots are growing down towards the soil and kill the original tree. So our guide found actually close to the track a big pile of poo from the Taipi top here. So first we went to the beach but at the beach there were no tracks and then they went into the forest to see if it's here and accordingly he Looks like we found him, so they're sleeping during the day. Let's see where he's sleeping. And it looks like actually that there's a track or like a path where the top here is walking up and down to the beach. There he really is, he's sleeping. It's big. Now after this top here spotting in the forest, which was probably definitely the highlight, to be like 10-15 meters close to the top here in the, in the jungle, <laughs> he came up once with his head and looked at us and said, oh, please let me sleep. Now we are kind of heading back, we hiked 9 kilometers. And now we hike a little bit backwards on the beach and have probably another small break and then head towards our car. So this is a Jesus Christ lizard. This lizard can walk on water. That's where the name is coming from. Uh, now it's sharp again. This is a pizzote looking for some food. Actually, there's a whole family, just like in the r &R movie. <laughs> this plant is like a lizard, it has a foot you can see it here. And it... Oh wow. That holds on to the hand. Yes. Oh wow. So you can hear the sound in the background from the cicadas. And this is actually a dead one which was lying here on the ground. And they look a little bit like a space greenish insect. And underneath the body here on the side, they have the openings where they make the sound. I don't know what happened with this one. But it's actually beautiful when you look close at it. There's squirrel monkeys here in the trees, but they're so small. Germans are 
bear hanging from the tree upside down. I don't know. I hope you can you can see it a little bit. So cute, beautiful fur. Observing us, what we are doing here in this territory. parking lot where we parked the car and started the tour and we did 22,000 steps today which is around 17.3 kilometers of hike so that's definitely worth to reward ourselves with a cold coconut here actually it costs 1,000 colonies which is 1 euro 50 it was such a beautiful hike I can really really recommend it because we saw so many animals. I think we have seen all animals of the park except the jaguar, the puma and the ocelot and probably some birds we didn't see. But we even saw frogs and it's not the season. And uh, we had a super cool guide. So we can really, uh, his name was Louis. He was had such a good eye. He saw every animal in the most weirdest places from Ficus tour. So if you are in Porto Jimenez, uh, go to Ficus tour. It's $75 if you are just a couple and it's $65 per person if there are two more people or if you are four people in the group. And <clears throat> we were really lucky with the weather. It's very hot but still the pass is beautifully done. It goes along the coast through. It's always under the shadow of the trees and there are several stops where you can have, eat a sandwich you have to bring your own food of course or do some drinks so this was the way we saw the Cocorado National Park in Costa Rica when you like the vlog please press the like button for us and if you haven't subscribed so please subscribe to our channel the next stop for us will be again a beach destination. We need to, to rest a little bit and see you soon in the next vlog. Thank you for following us on our travels. Safe travels always to you. Bye bye.